Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we just witnessed a pretty damn good pay-per-view that is NXT TakeOver War Games. Now, for me, in my opinion, this is a good NXT War Games, but of course, this pay-per-view wasn't as good as the previous War Games pay-per-views that I have seen. The one last year was definitely good. The year before that was pretty damn good. But for me, in my honest opinion, this wasn't as good as the as the pay-per-views before. This is a pretty good one, but not so good. We're going to talk about it right now, and we're going to talk about everything from the match itself, from the beginning to end. This is Destination Gaming, starting now. everybody this is your boy destination gaming and welcome to the channel and we are here to give you guys a re i'm here to give you guys a review on the new pay-per-view that just got through finish wrapping up which is nxt takeover war games now before we get started with this review i want to make sure you guys hit that subscribe button tap the notification bell so you don't miss any single video also guys make sure you follow me on social media at desi the official that is on twitter and instagram make sure you guys go follow me on there and i'm bringing back some gaming y'all i'm bringing back some gameplays i'm gonna do uh call of duty and whoever whatever get the most votes on my on my twitter poll on my poll on my twitter well definitely i would definitely either play injustice 2 or i might play uno so i don't know I don't, do not know. So keep on voting on my Twitter. If you follow me on Twitter, please go vote. Without further ado, let's get started. So the show starts with the women's uh, war games. It is Chelsea Blackheart, Io Shirai, Ember Moon, and Rhea Ripley versus Tony Storm, Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez. This match itself was a damn good match. I instantly love this match why do i love this matchup it's very simple hold on let me tuck this camera up with this okay why do i love this matchup it's very simple this match basically shows you how the women's division is the women's division in nxt is a damn good division y'all i mean a damn good division it's so much better than the main roster and if we want to keep it real here, it's honestly a little bit better than the AEW Women's Division. I'm sorry. The only women that I like on the Women's Division in AEW is Hikaru Shida, Britt Baker, and Thunder Rosa. Anybody else on there, I don't really mess with. But the Women's Division in NXT, they just basically, all the women that's in this match then showed you something. It basically showed you that, yeah, we don't have a lot of, you know, we don't have a Bianca Belair. We don't have a Shayna Baszler. You know what I'm saying? Tika Knox, I hardly ever see her. You know what I'm saying? I think she's over there on NXT UK. I think it. But we may not have them, but we can still bring out the best in one another. We can still bring out the best damn good match in the women's division on NXT. That's what I love about that match. But... Team Candice LeRae wins the match. It was a really good match. I honestly did thought that the uh, Team Chelsea Blackheart um, team was going to win, but they didn't. They didn't win. The next match, the very next match, Tommaso Ciampa against Timothy Thatcher. Now, I used to watch Timothy Thatcher a lot. And I mean, I used to watch him when I used to watch MLW. I still watch MLW, but I don't watch it now, especially with the whole pandemic thing going on. But back when MLW had fans, Timothy Thatcher was there. He put up a classic match with him and David Hart Smith. And of course him and, was it Tom Lawler? Yeah, Tom Lawler. Timothy Thatcher in this match, he's a really good wrestler. But he kind of felt like he was, you know, taking it slow a little bit. He wasn't really as good in this match. 
Now, Tommaso Ciampa, of course, Tommaso Ciampa is a beast. He is a monster, literally, in this match. I personally love Tommaso Ciampa, and this was a pretty good match. I like this match. Tommaso Ciampa beats Timothy Thatcher. Now, the question on everybody's mind, especially mine, is what's going to happen after this? What's going to happen? What's going to happen with both men? With Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa? Where do they go from here? Does Tommaso Ciampa continue on, you know, continue on with, you know, just feuding with everybody? Or does he have the opportunity to, uh, to go after the NXT Championship? Because I would love to see a Ciampa versus Finn Balor. To me, I personally love that. And with Killer Cross on, on his way, we could be seeing a triple threat between these three, or we could see Timothy, uh, not Timothy, not Timothy Dash, um, we could see Killer Cross against Finn Balor for the NXT Championship, and whoever wins that match, Tommaso Ciampa could go after them. That could be a really good match. That could be a damn good match. So, I don't know what's going to happen between these two men. Hopefully something good and something fresh for the both of them. All I know is, is that with this match itself, Tommaso Ciampa will continue on becoming the best star in NXT. I don't want Tommaso Ciampa to go over to the main roster because everybody knows what happens when you put somebody from NXT, you put them to the main roster. They instantly get buried and it gets flush. You don't believe me? Take a look at Nakamura, Bobby Roode, aka Robert Roode, whatever you want to call him. Ricochet, Ali, even though he wasn't in NXT, he was in 205 Live, he's still buried. So you still see all these NXT guys in this match, in this main roster, and they're easily going to be buried on site. That's why I don't want to see that from um, Tommaso Ciampa or Timothy Thatcher, period. But other than that, Tommaso Ciampa gets the win. Tommaso Ciampa gets the win. So we go from there, right, to a, a weird, weird looking match, a strap match between Dexter Loomis and Cameron Grimes. Now, let me go ahead and explain this to you. I'm a fan of Dexter Loomis. I'm not so much a fan of Cameron Grimes. You know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of Cameron Grimes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not that much of a fan. Dexter Loomis, yeah, I'm a fan of his. But my thing is this. This matchup was, was good. This was decent. I like this match. And Dexter Loomis definitely had, you know, of course, they had that creepy vibes. You know, if they put Dexter Loomis versus Killer Cross in the match, oh, my God. That would be a cinematic match for the ages. Oh, that would be, that would be so unbelievable man and i would i would love to see that match take my money bro take my money to see that match i'd love to see that match but dexter lumen picks picks up the win in a strap match and i don't know what you guys want me to say about this match this match was decent for what it was this is really good dexter lumen is good Cameron grimes is good both men are good what's going to happen after this i don't know Maybe you could have him for the North American Championship. I do not know. I don't know. But we'll see from we'll see. We'll just see from there. Triple threat match between Johnny Gargano, Leon Ruff, and Damian Priest. There you go. There you go. Damian Priest. I literally had to look up his name. That's how I I really forgot. My mind is all over the place, y'all. Mind all over the place. But, yeah, Damian Priest, Leon Ruff, and Johnny Gargano, triple threat match for the North American Championship. I didn't really like this match. I'm sorry. It was good for what it was until the whole Ghostface stuff going to happen. And I didn't really like that. I wasn't really a fan of it. This, that was probably the most of the reason why I, I stopped watching. I stopped watching NXT regardless, but I would definitely tune in for their pay-per-views to see what's going on. And as far as Damian Priest, I personally thought that he was going to win this match. 
But of course, Johnny Gargano wins the match. He is now a three-time NXT North American Champion. And I have a question regarding to this whole match. If you knew Leon Ruff wasn't going to win this match, why didn't you why didn't you put the title on him in the first place? Why would you put the title on him knowing that his title reign wasn't going to last long? Knowing that he wasn't going to be like, you know, really fighting for the championship that much. Knowing he was going to lose to Johnny Gargano. Why would you put the title up? Um, why would you have him? Why would you have Johnny Gargano lose the championship just to get it back? That reminded me so much of a main roster idea. And to be honest with you, it's honestly ridiculous. And I do not want to see that match ever again, to be honest with you. I'm just going to keep it real. It was good for what it was to the whole ghost thing coming around, attacking uh, Damian Priest all over the ring. And then I noticed that it was only attacking Damian Priest, nobody else. So it was decent for what it was. It was all right. It was cool. But then, but then, ha ha. But then, right after, y'all, right after the match was over, one of the ghosts unveils his mask. And who is it? Austin Theory. Austin Theory. You know who Austin Theory is, right? Come on, you know who Austin Theory is. You know that guy that used to be on uh, Seth Rollins' group like a, not too long ago? Like, you know, back when they was wrestling at the Performance Center? You know who that is. And then after that, they didn't like for what he was doing. After that, they moved him away from the um, group. And then put him over on NXT, knowing it would not not really gonna do much of anything to for him. I mean, I don't know. After helping Johnny Gargano win the championship, I do not know. I don't know. All I know is they're probably gonna have an Austin Theory, Leon Ruff, Damian Priest, Johnny Gargano type situation all over again. I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully this storyline continues to be like, try to be, let it be good or something. You know, just try to let it be good. That's all I can say. I'm just going off right now. So right after that, they announced around next year in 2021, around January the 6th. I'm so gonna be copyrighted. I stole that from Dashy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Around January the 6th, 2021, they're gonna have a New Year's Evil type uh show for nxt good thumbs up let's see what's going on on the, over there which i'm not really gonna be looking over there i'm probably going i'm probably going dvr it just to see how it is and then after that whatever the main event the main event folks another war games it is for the brand versus undisputed era which means it is pat mcavey pete dunn only Lorcan and Denny Birch versus Adam Cole, Strong, Fish, and O'Reilly. I like this main event. The main event itself was pretty damn good. I enjoyed the main event, to be honest with you. I definitely enjoyed the main event. Do I want to see Pat McAfee in, in the ring again? Hell no. But do I enjoy this match, though? Absolutely. Now don't get me wrong, Pat McAfee, he's cool. I'd rather see him do promo work than fight. It's like seeing MVP in the ring. I don't really want to see MVP wrestle anymore. I just want to see him do the do the mic work, the promo work. He's really good at the promos. You know what I'm saying? Pat McAfee needs to simply stay as a manager. Just simply stay as a manager and you'd be all right. You'd be all right. But the Undisputed Era wins this match. The main event was awesome. I personally thought that Team McAfee, whatever his last name is, I thought he was going to win this match just by the way it looked. But then, of course, the Undisputed Era, they know. They know. They're like, man, look, come on, bro. Come on, bro. We did this before. We was at the one not too long ago. We was at the one last year and the year before that. So we know what we're doing. This is not our first barbecue. This is not our first time driving. We're on the road, baby. We're doing great. And 
Adam Cole, Fish, O'Reilly, and Strong. These four men are honestly the face of NXT. Along with Finn Balor and many others. I feel like if they go on the main roster, their careers will immediately be dead. Their careers will immediately be dead if the Undisputed Era goes to the main roster. Because if you put them on the main roster, they probably going to put up some type of angle to split them up. Fish O'Reilly could be heading the Raw. Well, you know, Cole and Strong could be over on SmackDown. We never know. We never know. But I'm just saying, that's not what I want. I don't want that type of environment for that Undisputed Era. You already have to do that with Keith Lee and everybody else that's on the main roster. Keep them on NXT. Keep them on NXT. I don't care what you do. Just keep them on NXT. Period. Period. Well, that's your review, guys. NXT TakeOver War Games. This is a pretty good pay-per-view. Not as good as the years prior, but this was good. This is a really good NXT TakeOver. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give this video a big fat thumbs up. Like, comment, subscribe. Tap that bell for all notifications so you don't miss any single videos. This is your boy Destination Gaming saying stay tuned for more gaming and peace.